Hey guys, welcome to the first video on this channel. Today we'll go over how to FICAL blood, a technique used to separate plasma, PBMCs, and red blood cells from whole blood. This is a pretty common procedure, especially if you need to isolate lymphocytes. In this video, I'll give a quick summary of what a FICAL is for, and then go through the procedure step by step in detail. At the end, I'll go over some common issues and how you can try to fix them. And if you don't want to see blood, do not watch this video. I don't want to see any comments about it. Three, two, one. Okay. So, Let's start with this really quick summary of what we're going for and why it's useful. We're going to start with our fresh whole blood sample with all of its plasma, red blood cells, and white blood cells mixed together. And we'll need to layer it carefully on the FICAL pack, a medium which is more dense than plasma and white blood cells, but less dense than red blood cells. We'll then centrifuge it and that blood will filter through the FICAL and we'll be left with four distinct layers, ideally, which look like this. We'll have our red blood cells at the bottom, the FICAL on top of that, and the white blood cells and platelets in the buffy coat, and then the plasma on top. It's all about density here. So, why would you want to isolate lymphocytes? Well, it's useful, especially in a clinical and research setting, to test the function of different white blood cells. Too many red blood cells can interfere with some assays and lymphocyte function, especially since most whole blood samples will be full of damaged or dead red blood cells. Isolating PBMCs can also be useful for scientists who want to create a biobank and use the cells in the future, as red blood cells are more fragile than white blood cells. As those RBCs die, they can release stress proteins that can affect the white blood cells. Alright, let's get started with the step-by-step -step for my protocol, and I'll say right off the bat that your lab may use a different protocol, and they probably will, depending on what they need their cells for or what the lab has access to. My goal here is to collect PBMCs as well as plasma and keep the PBMCs as viable as I can for future processing. Your procedure might use different machines, volumes, reagents, brands, safety measures, etc. So this video is just to give you a basic understanding of the process. Always make sure you process your samples appropriately for what you need and what you have and follow the necessary safety precautions and protocols for your lab. I'll put my protocol in the description below. All right, first, let's go over what I'll use. We have our whole blood sample here in an anticoagulant. Your lab may use EDTA, but we use heparin. Reason for that is EDTA chelates the calcium, which causes cell stress over time, since calcium is the second messenger needed for cell signaling and survival. That cell stress can interfere with the assays we do. Not sure about yours. We have our centrifuge tubes. I'm using 15 mil. I've seen labs go up to 50 mil up to you and the volume you're using. Next we have our FICAL pack, which is just a solution with a density gradient designed to separate the lymphocytes from red blood cells. There's other similar products from other brands, such as LymphoPrep. I don't think it makes much of a difference. I'll have my FICAL wrapped in foil just to minimize light exposure. You might also want to keep this refrigerated for storage, but make sure it's at room temp for this protocol. We have our centrifuge, and for my procedure I'm going to use a pipette aid, pipette gun, whatever you want to call it, a 1000 microliter pipette and a 20 microliter pipette. I'll use a complete human media that starts with 500 mil RPMI, and then add 50 mil FBS for protein, 5 mil HEPIs to maintain a stable pH, 6 mil penicillin streptomycin to reduce contamination, and 5 mil L-glutamine as a supplementary amino acid for the cells. Some labs just use PBS though. We found, however, that using a complete media such as ours not only increases the cell viability, but the yield as well. The protein, especially the albumin and the FBS, helps to coat the centrifuge tubes and prevent the PBMCs from sticking to the walls of the plastic, allowing you to isolate more of them. I'll also need cryostore for the PBMCs before storing them in the minus 80, as well as some cryo tubes, Ebendorf tubes, and cryo labels. You need something like cryostore to freeze cells in the minus 80. If you freeze them in regular media or PBS, you're just going to kill your cells. The cryostore is formulated to prevent the cells from rupturing when they're frozen. The dimethyl sulfoxide reduces the freezing point, allowing for slower cooling, and it prevents ice crystals, all of which are important to reduce cell damage. Sorry if I'm being too detailed in this video, but you don't want to be caught off guard when your PI asks why we do what we do. I'll be doing this in a clean biosafety cabinet with a vacuum aspirator. And for PPE, I'll be wearing a lab coat, nitrile gloves, and if my boss asks, I'll also be wearing my safety glasses, regular lab attire, I guess. I'll also be using a cell counter. For your sake, I hope you also have one of these. Um, that'll need these little cell counter slides as well as tripan blue. Once we have everything, we can get going. And as a reminder, if you're running this protocol and run into any issues, I'll go over some more common ones and ways to solve them at the end of this video. Okay, we have some blood here. Don't ask where I got it. Um, I'm just going to label this real quick, as well as my centrifuge tubes. Usually I'm thorough here, but the sample's just for this video. But labeling everything is really important, especially if you have multiple samples. The fresher the blood, the better. I try and FICAL these day of, or at least within 48 hours. 
After that, the cells start dying and the separation isn't as clean. Also, don't forget to invert the sample a couple of times to make sure it's well mixed. One thing our lab does differently than most is we don't usually dilute the blood. Lots of labs just collecting PBMCs will dilute it one-to-one -one in PBS. This will get a cleaner separation at the end with a higher lymphocyte yield, but your plasma will be mixed with PBS, and our lab keeps that plasma for future processing so we don't dilute it. I'll put 4 mil of our FICL into a 15 mil tube. Doesn't need to be too precise here since 4 mil is a bit of an arbitrary number. You might need more or less depending on your volume of blood or tube size. And this does need to be room temperature since adding cold media to blood will activate platelets, leading to clumping, even in an anticoagulated tube. This will impair the density gradient since platelets will stick to RBCs and WBCs, so you won't get as clean of a separation. And then we can start layering the sample onto the FICL. I use the 1000 microliter pipette for this. Some people just use a pipette gun, again, up to you. And this part by far is the hardest part of the whole process, is you need to layer the blood on top without breaking that layer. I start with going just above the FICL until I get a drop that makes contact. Don't worry about that little bounce, it's okay, since all the blood came back. And then I sort of drag the blood up into the side to ensure that as I'm pipetting, the blood goes slowly enough to not break that layer. Any sudden push and you might break that layer, which we don't want to do since we need the blood to filter through the FICL, not just bypass it. If the layer is compromised, you'll get less PBMC yield or no yield at all. And I'll interrupt myself really quickly to say this is a bit of a pilot video, so if you like this video, please help me to impress my coworkers by subscribing to this channel. Also comment below what you'd like to see or what you'd like to have me do differently. It would really help me to figure out which direction to take this channel. Also comment below if you're a struggling med or PhD student. My condolences. Thanks so much. Okay, back to the layering. Another method that might make the layering easier for you is just to angle the tube, give it a little shake to break the surface tension and get that FICL flat and then pipette slowly against the wall. I actually really like this method. I can usually do it a lot faster than the vertical style. Just make sure that the blood isn't running down the side under the FICL. And you might need a little finesse when you bring it back to vertical. Just make sure that the blood isn't sticking too much against the tube. And then see, some of the blood here is falling. Even if you don't break the layer, it's pretty common for the blood to start forming little drops that fall into the FICL. The longer you take, the worse it'll get. And this is totally okay, but the more that drops, the less yield you'll get. For me, I'll still get plenty of PBMCs, so it isn't really an issue. This can make it stressful though when you need to do several samples at once, so I try and layer them quickly or do them in batches. A potential cause for this is that FICL becomes less dense at higher temperatures, so try and keep your FICL around 20 degrees Celsius. This might also be that the FICL has gone bad, or it might just be the sample itself. Okay, once we have our samples layered, we can centrifuge them. I recommend setting this up in advance so you minimize the time that the RBC layer has to start falling through the FICL. We'll run it at 2000 RPM for 30 minutes with the acceleration and deceleration set to four. We also need to make sure that the centrifuge brake is off so there's a gentler deceleration, and that'll help to preserve the layers we're going for. Always remember to add a balance. Time for a break as that spins, if you can get away with that. I guess we could also use this time to set up for when it's ready, so let's do that. First, I'll pull out the complete media and cryostore from the fridge so that they can get a little bit closer to room temp. If your media is too cold when you put your cells in, you might lose some viability. I'll set up some Eppendorf's for the plasma, usually 3 to 5 for the 8 to 9 mil of whole blood I use. These will end up in the minus 80, so I label these as well, just not for this video. If you have a lot of samples, setting up your labels in advance during the wait times really helps with the workflow. You can also get the cryotube labels for the PBMCs ready, just keep the cell count blank for now. For the cell counting, I'll also set up an Eppendorf and put 10 mil of tripen blue in there. I don't put the tip all the way to the bottom of mine just to minimize picking up debris, but I'll explain that later. And finally, I'll label a new 15 mil centrifuge tube for the Buffy coat. Okay, the centrifuge is done, and I slammed 32 ounces of coffee in my 5 minutes of remaining time, so let's get back to it. I love academia. So let's get this out carefully. Those layers are looking nice. Remember, RBCs on the bottom, FICL, Buffy coat, aka PBMCs, aka leukocytes and platelets, and then plasma on top. You might not need to, but we keep that undilated plasma, so I'll be putting roughly one mil of it into each of my labeled Eppendorfs. While I'm doing that, I try not to get too close to that Buffy layer. I'd rather sacrifice a little bit of plasma for a higher cell yield. Once we're close to that layer, we can really slowly go in circles sucking up those cells and putting them in our Buffy tube in the back there. Make sure your tip is right at the meniscus though, otherwise you'll just be sucking up FICL and missing the cells. Also don't rotate around too fast, you're just going to resuspend the cells and then make that layer less visible. I like to just eyeball it here to make sure no more cells are left. 
Since the solution is in the dilution, I want to fill the Buffy tube all the way up to 14 mil with our complete media. We have 3 mil in here, so I'll add around 11 media. Again, you can use PBS, but the complete media tends to get a better yield for us. A little mix. I'll invert it a couple times just to make sure that the cells are getting a nice wash, and then put it in the centrifuge for 5 minutes at 300 RPM, with the acceleration and deceleration set to 9 to pellet the cells. Balance as always, but you knew that every centrifuge step other than the initial FICO one will use these settings. Also, the centrifuge is always at room temp for this procedure, but after the initial 30 minute spin, it's okay to use a centrifuge that's four degrees Celsius if you need to. Okay, our cells are pelleted. Let's turn on our aspirator. We'll use these long glass tips. Not sure what you'd have. I like to get the bubbles out first and then just stay near the top until I've almost gotten all the supernatant out. Please be careful not to suck up your cells. You want to keep those. I think I got a little close for comfort here, but it's a Saturday morning and I had a long night and there's a camera between my arms blocking the view. So, you know, anyways, great. Now for counting, I'll resuspend them in five mil of media. Start with one mil just to get them resuspended well and then add the other four and mix. Let's grab 10 microliters of that five mil and mix it into our pre-prepared Eppendorf with Tripan Blue before we put 10 microliters of that mix into the cell counter slide. Great, throw that in. Wait a sec. Change the focus a bit. Wait a sec. Looks good. We'll just make sure the calculations are right. Yep, 10 to 10, tripan blue. I use the viable cell count and usually round it down just a little. So I'll note 2.5 million cells per mil. Let's put that tube back in the centrifuge for five minutes at the same settings to pellet our cells again. This also serves as a wash step. And as that spins, let's do a little math. We had two and a half million cells per mil and we had five mil. So that's 12 and a half million cells that'll be on the pellet. I want to store around five million cells per vial. So we'll do two vials at 6.25 million cells each. And for each vial, I'll have half a milliliter of cryostore. So for two vials, I'll resuspend the cells in one mil cryostore. Let's set up those two vials as the spin finishes. Remember to also label these well. You know how things get in the minus 80. Cool, spin's done. Okay, aspirate again, same as last time. Resuspend in a smaller amount first, but I just need one mil, so that's fine. If you're using anything more, it'd start with half a mil or one mil and then mix in the rest, especially since CrowdStore is really thick, so you need to be more mindful with your pipetting. Let's add half a mil to each tube, and then I'll put these two cryo tubes in a 4C freezer for 10 minutes so the cells don't get shocked. Put them along with the plasma in the minus 80, log where I put them so they aren't lost and forgotten about, clean up, and we're all set. We've successfully performed a FICL to isolate plasma and PBMCs from whole blood. Woohoo! All right, but you know, things don't always go as well as that one. So let's go over a few issues that you may run into. The first problem I'll cover is breaking the layer between the blood and the FICL, as shown here. If you're lucky, you'll have enough blood to just restart. But if not, you can do something a little unexpected, and that is just to mix your sample into the FICL until it's homogenous. Now you can layer that mixture onto FICL again probably splitting it if you need to into another tube or so just to fit that extra volume, and then centrifuge them on the FICL settings for 30 minutes and proceed as usual. You can use the same recovery technique if you take your FICL out of the 30 minute spin and happen to drop or mix it unintentionally where you lose your layers. Just mix it all together again and relayer it onto FICL. You're essentially starting over. If you want a better separation, you can dilute the mixture of blood and FICL one-to-one -one by volume with either PBS or cell culture medium before relayering it onto fresh FICL, but I skipped that in this video. The only issue with having to relayer, at least for me, is your plasma layer will now be mixed with FICL or PBS or media, so I can't really use the plasma for downstream studies since it'll be diluted with other reagents. You might be thinking, hey, isn't this just about density? You know, why can't I centrifuge a mixed sample without relayering it? So let's do a little experiment with that. I have three conditions here. On the left, I have a regular FICL set up as a control. To the right of that, I have a blood sample that's mixed into FICL. And the remaining two tubes are mixed FICL and blood layered on top of FICL. Let's spin these down. And as you can see, our regular setup looks good on the left there, as we have all the layers. The mixed one that I didn't relayer has separated into two layers and there's no separation between the FICL and the plasma. So I'm assuming the PBMCs are suspended somewhere in the top layer or sitting just above the RBCs. I guess I could try to collect all that supernatant and pellet it, but I'd probably be picking up a lot of cell debris and anything else that would be in that plasma, so I'd avoid that one. For the two mixed FICL and blood that are relayered on the right, you can see that we have our PBMC layer again. They're smaller layers since they're split between the two tubes, but there should be a decent total cell yield. 
doing that experiment, I also thought, hey, I have some extra time. What if I just layer blood onto Fickle and let it sit without the 30 minute spin? So here's that after about an hour, the plasma is starting to separate and the RBCs are falling. But sure enough, after a while, you just get these two layers without any effective separation, similar to the mixed condition shown earlier. So the more you know. For the next thing you might be worried about is you might see on the top of that plasma layer after the 30 minute spin, there might be some haziness and that's probably just lipids, proteins, and cell debris. So don't worry about that. As long as you get a decent PVMC layer, it's not usually a processing error. I can't see it in the... If you're running more than a few samples, you'll probably also notice that the plasma can often be different colors, ranging from pale to dark yellow or pink to red. High protein or bilirubin might make the plasma a deeper yellow, which is normal. High lipid levels and or cell debris can make the plasma more cloudy, which again is totally normal. The pink or red color variations like the one on the right here might be from hemolysis, which may be a sample processing issue such as pipetting too aggressively or using an old sample, but it may also just be the sample. For example, all these samples shown here were the same age, done in tandem, and all treated the same. Here are a couple more from a different day same thing, but as long as you get a solid PVMC layer, I wouldn't be too worried about color variations like those. A color change you might want to worry about though is if your PVMC layer itself is significantly red, like this one or this one, or if you have agglutinated chunks of RBCs in your PVMC layer, or more often if your PVMC pellet after washing the buffy cut with media is really red, like this one on the right. This probably just means that the PVMC layer has a decent amount of RBCs and or hemolysis contamination. Now if you don't care about that, you can leave it, but if you want to be picky, you can fix it fairly easily. First, I'll still take that plasma because that's fine, and then I'll take that bad Buffy layer and I'll resuspend it in our complete media up to 14 or 15 ml, and then spin it down to get a pellet. Now we can aspirate off that supernatant, which should contain what's left of the plasma and phycal, and then I'll resuspend the pellet in 1 mil room temperature RBC lysis buffer, and then mix in 4 more mil of lysis, 5 mil total. And if you're curious, um, RBC lysis is a hypotonic solution which causes extra water to enter the red blood cells and burst them. The lysis buffer only destroys red blood cells since the plasma membrane is more fragile than the white blood cells. And anyways, we'll let that sit for 5 minutes and then top off the tube with complete media to get a better wash. After we've spun that down, we can then aspirate it and now the pellet looks great. I'll give it one more wash with media just to remove any residual RBC lysis, spin and aspirate, and then we're good to keep going like normal. And if you're worried if all of that would kill off cells, PVMCs are usually more hardy than you might expect. Let's resuspend this in 5ml media to count, stain it, load it. And there we are, 2.44 million cells per mil, about 12 million total, 99% viability, just fine. And then from there we can finish processing like normal. I'll give you a second reminder though to give the PVMCs 10 minutes in the 4C fridge before putting them in the minus 80. People sometimes ignore or forget about that step. And then for the last issue I'll cover, and this only really matters if you're using a similar cell counting method as me, let's just quickly look at Tripan Blue. So this dye can be dirty, meaning there can be a lot of debris that settles at the bottom, which can make cell counting tough or less accurate. For that reason, I try not to mix this dye before using it, and I pull from the top of it. Here's a comparison of cells stained with the cleaner dye near the top, and then the dirtier dye near the bottom. Whole lot of gunk. And this one isn't even too bad. Once I use enough stain and it's mostly dirty like this, I just start a new one. These big ones can make it easier to just pull from the top when there isn't any sediment. Alright, and that's all I have for today, so thanks so much for watching this video. I'm hoping to release it in a few different languages too, so look out for those. Please comment below if you disagree with anything I shared in this video, or if you have any tips for me or others. Let's try and give the future viewers the highest chance of success in their labs. Please leave a like and subscribe for future videos. I'll be covering some basic lab procedures such as this one, as well as some more specific ones for immunology. Thanks so much again for being here, and I'll see you next time.